Hey, welcome back, Algebra 1. So good to see you um, again. God is good all the time, and if you believe it, say it with me all the time. God is good. So we are back with another video, and just wanted to uh, talk through this just really quickly. Hopefully it won't take too long, and you guys can follow along with me. If you have any questions, um, be sure to message me. Even as you're watching the video, write some of your questions down, and that way maybe you don't have to watch it a, a bunch of times just to get it, okay? So, let's go. Use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. So, we're going to actually use what we learned before to solve equations, okay? So, lesson 9, 5 in the textbook, page 583 and 584. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. Um, our essential questions, can I use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations? I hope by the end of this you can say yes. And then um, we're going to learn, that's our goal, is to learn to use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. So this is, this is our goal. That's what we're trying to do in this video, all right? Okay, so we're going to kind of start off where we started last time, using this to solve quadratic equations. Um, Start with our standard form of quadratic equation, okay, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And then we're going to use this quadratic formula to solve an equation in standard form. So let's go from this information and put it into our quadratic formula. This is what we were doing in our last video. If you remember, this is exactly what we were trying to do. So kind of abbreviated it here. I think we, we probably got a good handle on it last time. So let's jump right in. A equals 1. We're starting with this same one. Remember, x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. So A is 1, B is 1, and C is negative 12. Remember, there's an understood 1 in front of these variables. Whenever there's nothing there, it's an understood 1. Okay. Now we're going to plug it right in here, and we're going to see some of these values appear. So step by step, let's go. Okay, so we've got right here our quadratic formula. Then right here, we've entered in our values. So we've got negative one plus or minus the square root of everything inside these brackets here. Everything inside those brackets needs to be multiplied. So one squared minus four times one times negative 12. And all of that is over two times one, okay? So let's see how this plays out. All right, let's simplify a little bit. So this is one simplification. We didn't finish all of it, but we, we did some of it. We did our parentheses here. Uh, we did, let's see, one squared. So one times one is one, stays the same. Then we've got negative four times one, that's negative four. And negative four times negative 12 is, well, what's four times 12? That's 48, and negative and a negative is a positive, so we've got one plus 48. And see here, this symbol, that's square root. So that's the whole thing. Everything inside this parentheses here needs to be square rooted. Just like it shows in this image here, everything right there is square rooted, okay? And then underneath, we just had two times one, which is two. All right, so now we've got our next step. We can simplify this a little bit more. Negative one plus or minus the square root of 49. So negative one plus or minus the square root of 49, and that over two, okay. Or we could write it this way. So this is not anything new. The square root of 49, you guys know that, is seven. And, and we have plus or minus here because negative seven and negative seven, they both equal positive 49. And positive seven and positive seven multiplied together that equals 49. So both negative and positive could be the answer to that. So negative, positive, they're both an answer. That's why we have the plus or minus sign right here. That's important. And you'll see why right now. So we kind of go to our next page and, and we see I've slid everything over here. Same process. We had this square root of one plus 48. Uh, negative one plus or minus square root of 49. Or, so I just kind of 
slid everything up, and we started a new line down here. Okay, negative 1 plus or minus 7 over 2. So how we get to our answer, this is how do we do it? So how do we go from here to an answer for x? Well, it's kind of the same way as we showed with factoring. We, we do our two separate answers. We do against the zeros. So what we get here is we try two separate answers. That's why that's plus or minus. That's how we get our two separate answers. We do one as if it were plus and one as if it were minus. So we've got negative one plus seven over two or negative one minus seven over two. We don't know which one actually works for x. I mean, we assume because, you know, we we assume that the quadratic formula is correct, and, and we will assume that, though you can check it to be sure that your work is correct. So when we do this, we say x equals, and we've got, all we need to do now is simplify fractions. This is easy, this is this is elementary stuff. It's, it's nothing too complex, don't get worried over um, you know, a, a formula like this, it's actually very simple and a lot easier than factoring. This is going to take the place of factoring, like I told some of you. Factoring is good for a good grade on your standardized testing and your SATs. But quadratic formula is so much more simple. You're going to realize that it's so much easier than doing factoring and it gets the same job done. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see here. We had negative 1 plus 7. So negative 1 plus 7 is positive 6. 6 over 2 equals 3. Good. And then the other opportunity, or the other possible answer, is negative 1 minus 7. Negative 1 minus 7. So negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8. Negative 8 over 2. Negative 8 over 2 is going to show as negative 4. So negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Good. Okay. So let's practice. All right. Let's practice this process. All right. We've got x squared. So these same ones. Remember I told you in the last video we were going to use these. I hope you saved it. Maybe you can find it now if you put it away or lost it somewhere. But we're going to use this. So <clears throat> I want you to actually solve for the x's. We In our last video, we set up our quadratic um, formula. We added the values in, and now we're actually going to solve, solve, okay? So take just a moment, and you should be able to get this done. We'll kind of work through this first one. That way we make sure that we've got it, okay? So we set this up. This is our setup from our last video. That's all I did. I carried it over from our last video. We've got negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2, all that over 2 times 1, okay? So we get that all set up from here. Remember, b is 3, c is 2, and a is what's in front of this x squared right here, which is an understood 1. That's how we got all this. All right, so now what we need to do is simplify. You guys know how to do that. That's easy. Um, but let's let's do it together, okay? So we do negative 3 plus or minus square root of 3 times 3, or 3 squared, is positive 9. And then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Okay, so we've got parentheses 9 minus 8. And 2 times 1 is 2. Good, good. All right, moving forward. We've got negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 1. All right, so think about this. The square root of 1 is 1. Good, good. You got it. All right. So we bump that down. We've got these two possible answers. Sorry about that. Negative 3 plus or minus 1 and over 2. And then we've got, so negative 3 plus 1. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 over 2. So negative 2 over 2 turns out to negative 1. And then if we do negative 3 minus 1, that would be negative 4 over 2. So negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. Negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. 
All right, let me give you a second just to take care of this one. Hopefully uh, you understand. If not, maybe just go back a little bit or message me and ask me a question, okay? So see if you can solve this one. All right, so again, uh, we're just gonna take this time and go through our answer really quickly here. So um, I realized that I hadn't done this properly, so I went back and fixed it. So even I can make mistakes and that's okay. We're gonna keep working through it, okay? So x squared minus five x minus six, we've got negative, negative five plus or minus the square root of negative five squared minus four or negative four times one times negative six all over negative or two times one. Okay, so right here, right here, this is what we're working with. So negative and a negative. So negative negative five is gonna be positive five. And then negative five times negative five is positive 25. Negative four times one is negative four. Negative four times negative six is positive 24. So we've got five plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 24 all over two. So we've got five plus or minus the square root of 49. Okay, just like from our last problem, all that over two, or you could write it five plus or minus is plus or minus seven because seven times seven is 49. Good. So let's go with the positive first. We'll try five plus seven. Five plus seven is 12. 12 over two is six. Then we do five minus seven. 5 minus 7, that's going to be negative 2 over 2. That gives us negative 1. So those are our answers. All right, one more for us. Go ahead and pause and try to solve this. All right, hopefully you did, and let's get to it. So again, you see the B is this middle term, negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus four times four times negative six, all over two times four. So A is in red, that's four. B is in blue, that's five. And C is in green, that's negative six. Okay, so a little bit different, different challenges here. So we've got negative five plus or minus the square root of five times five is 25. Negative four times negative six is 24. And four times, uh, 24 is 96. Four days, 24 hours is 96 hours. Okay. All that over eight. And then we get here, we simplify this. 25 plus 96 is 190 or 121, which the square root of 121 is 11. 11 times 11 is 121. So let's go with our positive. We've got negative 5 plus 11 over 8. Negative 5 plus 11. Negative 5 plus 11. Negative 5 plus 11 is positive 6. 6 over 8 can be reduced to 3 fourths. Then we've got negative 5 minus 11. That's negative 16. Negative 16 over 8, that's negative 2. Good. One more. This one's tricky. Pause it and see what you can do. All right, let's get to this. Okay. This one gets complex quickly. We're actually not going to go where this leads us, but just know we're. This is not something that I'm going to test you over, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about this in algebra two more in depth. The square root of a negative number, we literally call that an imaginary number. It's literally made up. I mean, just like all words are made up. I know all numbers are just placeholders for real things. But this is just a, we call it imaginary number, and it's symbolized with an italicized I. So we just kind of um, use it as a placeholder. It, italicized I means negative square root, and again, it gets complex. We're not going to actually do any of these. I just wanted to kind of throw you a curveball there um, just to see if you were paying attention, okay? So hopefully uh, we understand. If not, go back and watch the video, and then we'll talk some more. Send me a message. I'd love to hear from you. All right, go and be blessed.